Vitamin D is probably the micronutrient you've heard the most about lately. It's been everywhere on the news and the subject of multiple research studies. 2020 was basically the year that vitamin D finally got the recognition and the attention it deserved. It was a good year for vitamin D, a bad year for everyone else, but a good year for the micronutrient. But you might be wondering what a micronutrient is. A micronutrient is any substance that is needed in only the tiniest amounts, yet is also essential for growth and good health. Yes, they might be small and insignificant, but you also cannot live without them. You've probably had it hammered into you since you were at school that vitamin D is absolutely essential for strong bones and teeth, and having too little of the stuff can result in soft bones, a condition known as rickets that typically affects children, or low bone density, a condition known as osteoporosis that typically affects older women. But vitamin D is far more versatile than just that, it's more of a jack of all trades if you get what I mean. Many studies over the last few years have linked vitamin D deficiency to aging, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, infertility, and cancer, including breast cancer. Breast cancer will affect 1 in 8 women in the United States during their lifetime, and is the most common invasive cancer in women worldwide, accounting for more than 600,000 deaths worldwide in 2018. The risk factors include female sex, older age, obesity, alcohol intake, and the use of hormone replacement therapy during menopause amongst other things. Genetics appears to play a large role as a personal or family history of breast cancer can predispose to certain types of breast cancer. But more recently scientists were able to demonstrate an association between vitamin D deficiency and an increased risk of developing breast cancer. So let me tell you today what all that's about. My name is Hashem Mashur and I'm a University of Cambridge graduate and student doctor and this is my YouTube channel Doctor Tell Me Why where I get to talk about anything I want, so long as it's medicine or science related. So if this is the kind of content that you want to see here on YouTube, then I recommend you subscribe. If you're still not convinced, then watch this video to the very end and maybe, just maybe, I might just manage to change your mind. But before we get started, I think it's important for me to advise you to go and see your doctor should you experience any of the following symptoms. It's very important that you give yourself a manual examination at home on a regular basis. I will include a link in the description below to show you or tell you how to best do that. So make sure to check that out. Now let's look into what the research seems to say. Multiple studies over the last few years have looked at the vitamin D levels of women recently diagnosed with breast cancer and compared them to ones from a matched control population. And the results, well, the results are very compelling. All but one study showed that women with newly diagnosed breast cancer were significantly more likely to have lower levels of vitamin D than women who were cancer free. And the meta-analysis elegantly showed the blood levels of vitamin D inversely correlated with breast cancer risk. Meaning that the higher your blood vitamin D levels were, the lower your risk of developing breast cancer. In fact, 45% of women with a new diagnosis of breast cancer had vitamin D levels that were lower than 20 nanograms per milliliter versus 33% of a matched control population. This trend seemed to continue down the line too. As 67% of women with a new breast cancer diagnosis had vitamin D levels that were lower than 30 nanograms per milliliter versus 53% of a matched control population. Several studies have demonstrated that women with a breast cancer diagnosis consistently are found to have lower blood vitamin D levels. 26 nanograms per milliliter versus the control group's 31 nanograms per milliliter. But why? What could vitamin D possibly have to do with breast cancer? Well, it might have something to do with the fact that breast tissue has vitamin D receptors, rendering it sensitive to vitamin D. Researchers know that increased expression of vitamin D receptors on breast epithelial cells is associated with increased breast cancer survival. And mice who lack vitamin D receptors in their breast tissue were shown to have accelerated breast development during puberty and pregnancy, which makes scientists think that vitamin D acts to regulate the proliferation and differentiation of breast tissue. In fact, we already know that breast epithelial cells contain the enzyme necessary to activate vitamin D in their cells and that activated vitamin D can act 
on the breast's vitamin D receptors, which then regulate several dozen genes with distinct anti-cancer properties. These anti-cancer properties include inducing cellular apoptosis, meaning programmed cell death, and anti-inflammatory actions as well as inhibiting cellular proliferation and angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is a process in which new blood vessels emerge off of older ones, delivering food and oxygen to tumors, allowing them to continue growing unchecked. And so it appears that vitamin D plays a protective role, preventing the development of a wide range of cancers, including those of the breast. So how do you make sure you're getting enough vitamin D? Very few foods are rich sources of vitamin D and almost 80% of your daily needs of vitamin D are synthesized right in your skin when your skin is exposed to UVB light. And although the Institute of Medicine recommends vitamin D levels that are above 20 nanograms per milliliter, these recommendations are mostly based on what is needed for good bone health, and not for the extraskeletal effects of vitamin D, like its anti-cancer and pro-immune system properties. It appears that the levels you should aim for for that are around 35 nanograms per milliliter. I'm afraid that's it for today, thank you for making it to the very end with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm can give this video a thumbs up and recommend this video to more people. If you really love this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel for more great quality medical content just like this. If you subscribe, I promise to deliver to you the latest groundbreaking medical research, as well as tell you about all these fascinating medical conditions and give you top tips on living a healthier life. Have to remember that. <laughs> anyway, thank you and see you all next Saturday. Love you all to bits, as always.